So here we're going to do some rough calculations in Smart Builder. Um, so what we have are just a bunch of text labels to sort of label everything. Um, the important parts that we have here are uh, text input, uh, sorry, a number input object, uh, which can be found here. Um, and we formatted it to show separators and have a prefix of a dollar sign. And uh, we've named it buy price. Uh, we have a very similar one that's a sell price. And then we have two other number input objects that uh, have their read only property set to true. So we're just using them to, to basically format our text. Uh, we don't want the, the learner to type in there and, and change those values. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the buy price and the sell price and we're going to calculate first the net profit. Uh, and then after that, we will calculate the, the return on investment. Um, so down here, we just have those equations, basically. So first, we'll figure out the net profit. It's pretty easy. Uh, and then we'll use that net profit to determine, you know, uh, the, the ROI. So let's get started. Uh, we'll do this based on when they click on the calculate button. So here we'll click on that and we'll add the uh, that is our trigger, so calculate on click. And then from here, uh, what we can do is we can start getting information from these two text in, uh, number input objects um, and set it set this object based on that. So um, I'm going to select my net profit output here and say I'm going to scroll down to set net profit output dot value to something. So we're going to kind of start at the end of the equation and then get this other information. So we don't want to set the value to 1. We want to set the value to basically our sell price minus our buy price. So we'll go over to the sell price, select that object, uh, and then scroll down and get the sell price dot value. So I'll grab that and keep it here. And then we'll also do the same for the buy price. So we'll select it, uh, go into the flyout panel, and get the uh, the value that's entered into there. So basically we want to subtract uh, the buy price from the sell price. So we're going to go to the value category. Uh, and here we can get uh, basic value things, um, but we can also use this math block. So we're going to add this. Uh, and this has the addition as the, the default modifier, uh, but we can click on the dropdown and change it to uh, you know, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and exponent. So with these, you can kind of do all sorts of different things. So the one that we want is subtract. So we'll change it to that. Uh, we don't need this. So I'll grab the sell price, plug it in there, grab the buy price, and plug it in there. So we're going to take the sell price minus the buy price. That's going to be our net profit. So now we can preview. And here, let's uh, let's type in some numbers. We'll say the buy price was $1,000. We'll say the sell price was $1,200. Uh, and then we'll calculate that. So there's our net profit of $200 and zero cents. Um, let's try this with a slightly lower sell price. You can calculate it, and now it's negative $12. All right, so let's uh, let's set up the next portion. We're going to set the return on investment. So just like we did with the net profit, we're going to select that object and we're going to set the value. And this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. So we need to figure out the net profit, uh, which we did right here. So I'll duplicate this. And we need to know the cost of investment, which is basically the same as our buy price. So I'm going to grab this buy price and duplicate it. And what we need to do is we need to take this value and divide it by the buy price. So again, I'll go to value. Uh, we'll get the math block. I'll change this to divided by. And then I can just plug these in. So this I don't need. We'll plug that in there. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, now we also need to take whatever this output is 
and multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. Um, so again, we'll return to the value block. Uh, we'll get the, the value category and get the math block. And here I'm going to change this to multiplied. And we're going to multiply it by 100. And then we'll plug this into here, and then plug this into here. So here it's going to do sort of all of this math. It's going to say, uh, figure out the net profit, divide that by our cost of investment, which is our buy price, and then multiply it by 100 so that we get a nice round percentage, or a nice percentage. So let's go ahead and preview this. And we'll try those numbers again. So we'll say uh, buy price was 1,000, sell price was 1,200. So we made a, a little bit of a profit here. We'll calculate it. We see our net profit is 200, and our return on investment is 20%. Um, and this can go in both directions. Again, if we lost some money, uh, we can see our return on investment was negative 120. All right, so I've given myself a bit more room here in the action area uh, just by dragging this around. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to make this a little bit more complex. Uh, we're going to take this uh, net profit output and make it green if it's positive and red if it's negative. We can do that uh, by adding in a condition into here. Uh, we can also do something similar with the, the ROI. We can make it green if it's above a certain amount maybe orange if it's just okay, and then red if it's negative. Um, so let's start with this one. Uh, we'll say, we'll go to the control category and grab this conditional block, drop it in here. Uh, here's where we're calculating the, the net profit. So we'll duplicate that, plug it into this condition, and we'll say if that works out to being greater than zero, then we'll take this text object, and we'll make it green. And if this value is less than zero, uh, equal to or less than zero, uh, we'll take that net profit output and change its color to red. All right, let's do something similar for this guy. Uh, so we'll go to the control. Uh, this time we'll get the, we'll get the same conditional block. We'll take all this math, duplicate it, plug it into there, and uh, first we're going to check to see if it's above some arbitrary amount. We'll say 4% ROI is, 4% and above is green, uh, anything less than that is going to be orange, and if it's negative, we'll make it red. So uh, we'll start with, if all of this is greater than 4, then we'll take this guy and we'll make it green. Uh, I'm going to add an else if in here. So I'm going to take this value and we're going to set up um, uh, basically limits. So we'll say if this is less than 4, We'll change this one to greater than or equal to 4. This one will be if it's anything less than 4, but it's also greater than 0, uh, then we will make this orange. So what this is basically doing is it's saying uh, the first condition that it's going to check for is if this value is above 4, it's going to be green. Uh, this here is saying uh, it's setting an upper and a lower limit. That's why we use this uh, this and block to connect them. So we want to know if it's less than four but still greater than zero. So uh, we're taking this and block to connect both of these. Uh, and then if it's any other value, the only condition that we've not accounted for is if it's zero or below. Uh, so that's what we'll set in our else. So we'll duplicate that, plug that in there, and then we'll mark it as red. All right, let's preview again. So we'll take starting price of 1,000. Uh, our sell price will do really good. We'll say we got uh, 1,200. 
both are green. That looks great. Uh, let's say this is not that great of a, an improvement. Let's say we made two dollars. So that's only a 0.2 percent ROI. Uh, so it's orange. If we got slightly better, that's right about uh, oh, it's four percent. So we'll say 39. So that's right below 4%, so we only get uh, orange. Anything above that is going to be green. And then if it's if it does worse than it started out as, uh, they both turn red. All right, so our, our math blocks are looking pretty crazy. Um, and the reason for that is because we're redoing the same thing over and over again. Um, this same calculation is being done here for the net profit and here. Uh, similarly, it's being done here and here and here and here. Um, we're calculating the ROI, you know, four different times here. All of these blocks are, are quite redundant. Um, so a smarter way to do this would be to use local variables. So then we can only do the math once and then use that value uh, multiple times. So let's copy this page. Uh, we'll duplicate it. And we'll call it using local variables. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a local variable. So we'll go to the variables tab. We'll grab this initialize local name to something. And we're going to plug that in right at the top. So the way that this works is we're going to create a variable or two. Um, we're going to use them, and then they're going to stop existing by the end of the block. So uh, this will make more sense once we actually set it up. So let's call this, uh, we're going to create a variable for our net profit. And we're going to create another variable for our, our ROI. So we can just initialize those values to zero. So I just went to the, the value category and uh, pulled this in here. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, mouse over net profit. And that gives us a tiny little flyout panel where we can get this value and set this value. So we want to set it, so put it in there. And uh, we can just use this uh, calculation to set our net profit. So now we can just get the net profit. So I'll mouse over this again, use a get block, and plug it in there. Uh, we'll pull in our condition. And here, where we were calculating it multiple times, now I can just use this variable. So that's redundant. Uh, next, we'll set our ROI. So we'll mouse over this, we'll set it. And we're going to set it to uh, this math here, where we calculated it. But uh, this was our, our net profit. We've already calculated it once. Why calculate it again? So we'll just duplicate this, plug it in there, and then set our ROI to this math. And then we're going to set our ROI to our ROI. So this is a value, and then this is the, uh, the object, the output object. And, uh, and then this is where it's going to get really useful. Uh, we'll drag this condition back in. And uh, here's where we calculated the ROI again. So we'll just plug this in. And then here, that's where we calculated it again. So we'll just get the variable and plug it in. Here's where we, where we calculated it you know, one more time. So let's use our local variable. So this is a little bit neater. Um, it allows you to basically cut down on, on the redundancy. We, we set our values uh, pretty early here, and then we just use references to them. So you can see that compared to our initial 
action here, uh, where we're basically doing the same work over and over and over again. Here we can do it based on uh, these particular numbers, or these particular variables. So uh, it basically just allows you to kind of calculate something once and then get a reference to it. That's kind of the, the power of variables in general. Um, and then what's nice about these local variables is that they just stop existing uh, outside of this block. So if I had, say, another text object, and we wanted to set that text, um, if I put it in here, I can get the ROI. But if I put it outside of that, uh, this is, doesn't actually exist anymore. So this isn't going to work. Let's preview it and see. So this should all still work. We'll do a thousand. We'll do that sort of thing. Uh, so this doesn't work. It set it to nothing because it's trying to, to find this local variable, uh, but the local variable no longer exists outside of here. So this is nice to use when you, you want to use it as basically a placeholder for something uh, and then not worry about it afterwards. So you don't have 8 million uh, variables in your list on different pages where you don't care about it.